Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Inkenna. I am responsible for everything that goes on here. As you guys can tell from the title of today's video, we are gonna be doing another chit chat video that has to do with nursing school. So the title of today's video is Advice for Clinicals. If you guys don't already know, clinical is the time that you get to go into the hospital, the rehab, long-term care facility, wherever it might be, and you actually get hands-on experience. Um, so this is a time that like you've really been waiting for. This semester, our clinical is focused for our class fundamentals health assessment. That's Nursing 302. Um, so we have clinical it's six hour shifts and we had six of these the first week was orientation and then the rest of the weeks were actually getting paired up with a nurse or a cna it was really a cna but one week i did get paired up with a wound care nurse um, and then subsequent semesters it increases so next semester i do have clinical for mental health and for med surge and those are going to be nine hour clinical days senior year i'm moving into 12 hour clinicals for both of the semesters and the final semester, spring semester, is going to be a practicum, so I'm gonna be one-on-one -on -one following around a nurse. Next semester is really the time that I'm actually gonna to get to start doing things. I get to pass medications, I get to start giving injections, um, and then I also will be following around a nurse next semester. So to go ahead and get into my advice of things that I've learned this semester, and I might have to go back and update this each semester, but I think that this is a pretty core list of just some advice that I would give any pre-nursing students or anybody who is going to start clinical next semester, whenever you watch this, um, who is starting clinical soon. So the first tip would be to eat breakfast. I have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. My clinical is at 6.30 and I really like to get there 30 minutes early and I just kind of sit in the car and chill. Um, it's never a good feeling to be rushing into anywhere. So I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, get myself together, take a nice hot shower, put on your scrubs, make sure that your scrubs are already washed, ironed, pressed out, whatever, they're hanging up and just eat your breakfast, take your time. Um, although you may not be doing any like book work or anything, it's just nice to have a clear head and breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Your brain needs glucose, so definitely eat a good breakfast. Tip number two would be to keep your clinical bag in the car. For my clinicals, I have to wear a name badge. It's just our university provided name badge. I keep that in my glove compartment and then I keep my stethoscope and any other things like my pen light, um, tape, sh scissors, I was about to say shears, tape, scissors, Anything that like that, pens, I keep all that in my car so I don't forget it. I already have it with me. And I would suggest keeping your clinical bag in your car. I have a little tote that I have and it just stays in my back seat. Um, so I definitely say leave that in your car so that you do avoid forgetting anything. Tip number three would be to get comfortable shoes and get compression socks. I have these Crocs. I got these when I was in CNA school. Um, I believe these were $38 on Amazon. I'll make sure that I include a link down below, but these are super duper comfortable. Um, um, and I mean, they may not be the cutest, but they get the job done. They're super comfortable and I, almost everybody needs white shoes for uh, nursing school. They tell us that we can have any type of nurse, um, any type of white shoes, so it can be tennis shoes. I just find that these are comfortable and I mean, I can I use them for CNA school and I can use them for nursing school now. In terms of the compression socks, you are standing on your feet for extended periods of time. And you just wanna make sure that you're not developing anything like varicose veins. Um, you don't want your feet swelling up unnecessarily. It's just, you are on your feet for long periods of time and it's very rare that you get to sit down. So definitely um, invest in some good ones. Even if you have to get some cheap ones now and get some really good ones later, just get some compression socks. Tip number four would be to have a small notebook. We have to use the software DocuCare for school and that's what we go in and we create like a fake patient. We don't use any like pertinent identifiers. It's all confidential. But we go in and we have to basically fill in a chart for this patient um, from eyes and nose intakes and outputs to ADLs, activities of daily living. Um, we do a full exam, focused exam, like from H-E-E-N-T, from head, eyes, ears, neck, throat, all that stuff. We go through all of that all the way to like a skin assessment, falls risk, everything. Like we do a Braden skill. We do a detailed chart on each patient. Um, so with that being said, you have to write a lot of stuff down. And I got one of these notebooks. Actually, my sister got it for me. She got two of these and I believe they were like a dollar a piece. Um, it's just a little composition notebook and I write all my notes down about patients in here. And it's really helpful because believe it or not, you may think that you will remember everything, but you will not. Um, and one thing that they will teach you in school is if you did not chart it, you did not do it. So. This is really helpful. I just carry a bunch of pens around with me in my pockets of my scrubs and I write down all the notes from medications to patient had inspiratory reasons bilaterally, 
um, everything I write it down and it really helps when you go back in your charting um, because a lot of the times I will like to say I'm not always an overachiever so some days I do go home and immediately do my chart do my care plan and get it done um, but other times I wait until the night before and I do them so definitely get one of these it helps with writing down anything that you see any questions that you might have it's just really useful to be able to take notes tip number five I would say is no cell phones we are not allowed to have our phones out unless we're in the break room but I just in the clinical setting you don't really want to be taking out your phone and then just in the essence of infection control you just don't want to be like touching a patient and even if you wash your hands maybe you forget to wash your hands god forbid please wash your hands but if you forget to wash your hands and you touch your phone and you have all kinds of germs on your screen so just do not touch your phones and then also a HIPAA thing like you don't want to be taking pictures with patients in the background it's just just leave it alone just you can be detached from your phone for six to twelve hours like it's not the end of the world tip number six is to ask questions always ask questions when I was with the wound care nurse I learned so much and she was so open to teaching um if you ever want to see like a really cool case definitely ask a nurse and be like hey can I go like accompany you and go see that and more often than not they will be like yeah sure you can come watch um and they like when you're ready to learn don't be closed off don't be reserved like this is your time to really learn like I don't know about you guys but like I really hate sitting in the classroom it is hard for me to pay attention on those days from 10 to 4 when we're just sitting in the lecture hall um so when we're on clinical like that is your time to thrive and shine and always think of clinical as a potential job interview so you want to do really well because if you want to work there then they will remember that especially if it's on a floor that you want to be on definitely use this as this is like an interview without it being an interview so definitely ask lots of questions be an inquisitive mind be a sponge tip number seven just relates back to something that I said earlier get to your clinical site 10 to 30 minutes early you don't want to be rushing if there's an accident then you don't I mean you just you don't want to be stressing and running into clinical I know they tell us all the time you live in Atlanta so you can't use Atlanta traffic as an excuse Use. We all know about Atlanta traffic, so leave early because they don't care that you're late. Um, so definitely get there and leave yourself enough time. So that way, if you get there early enough, you can go get breakfast if you forgot to pack breakfast and you didn't have groceries. Or if there is an accident, then you still have enough time that you're getting there early enough. Tip number eight, I would say if allowed, wear a jacket. If not, if your school allows you to, wear a compression shirt. So we have certain things that our student government association sold, like certain t-shirts and certain pullovers that are approved to wear into the clinical site however um, I didn't buy any of those things but if you don't buy any of those things then you can wear a white compression shirt with your clinical um, top your scrub top so it is always very cold like we I'm in a nursing home this semester and it is always freezing cold so because you don't want to be cold and like you can't function you're thinking about how cold you are just bring a jacket I always wear a jacket until I get out of the car and then I just run into the nursing home and I'm fine but I would definitely recommend bringing a jacket or wearing a compression shirt tip number nine also relates back to something that I said previously and that is to document everything if you didn't document it you didn't do it um, so you never want to be falsifying reports because a patient document is a legal document um, so that will fall back on you and that's just all types of unnecessary trouble um, so again making sure you have this little notebook write everything down even if you don't think it's gonna be uh, pertinent just write it down because you never know it's always nice to have it's better to have too much information than to not have enough and then tip number 10 this is arguably the most important thing that I'm gonna tell you in this whole video is you shower immediately and take off your scrubs when you get back from clinical you want to take off your scrubs and you want to bathe before you do anything before you get into bed before you sit on your furniture with all that being said hospitals have a lot of germs and you don't want to bring those germs home with you it doesn't take long just take off your stuff I always try to immediately wash my scrubs and just go about my day and I usually try and wash them separately so there are a lot of germs in the hospital you just want to keep yourself because you don't want to end up being the patient that is all so you guys thank you guys so much for watching if you guys feel like there are any other tips and advice that you may want to include in this definitely leave them down below um, I hope that you guys found this helpful if you guys want to see more chit chat videos dealing with nursing school definitely let me know as always thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to rate comment subscribe like the video give it a thumbs up follow me on Instagram and I'll catch you guys later bye